What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we are checking out 7 myths British people believe about America. Alright, so this is going to be quite interesting. So stay along till the end. And if you enjoy this sort of content guys, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. It truly helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So if you want to support, that will be perfect. Without further ado, let's get straight on to it. Hey, this video is sponsored by BritBox, the premier streaming service for Britain's most beloved TV shows. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to myths. Specifically, myths that British people, including myself at one point, believed about the United States of America. All right. But it is amazing what 14 years of living in the United States will do to your understanding and your perceptions about this very country. For instance, I learned early on that they don't have Cornish pasties, and I learned slightly less earlier on, so later, <laughs> that Michigan has them. But I don't live in Michigan, so one way or another I still have to have them imported. A quick reminder that if you're not subscribed to this channel, you can change that fact about your life right now. But these Same myths here, go guys. way beyond the absence of quintessentially British food. And so now that I've lived here for about a seventh of a century, it's time to outline some of the myths that us British believe about America and Americans. All right, let's see. This is a funny one because I think television gives us this notion that Americans do all live in giant houses like the McAllisters do in Home Alone. But Yeah, that's how I also imagine it. All Americans living in these huge houses. But it's not entirely the case. Sure, I mean, statistically, American houses are on average larger than their UK counterparts. There are a number of True. reasons for this, which I outlined in this video. But to say that all Americans live in really large houses is a complete fabrication of anything okay. resembling the truth. And I was a good example of this before I became a YouTube sensation, because when I first moved to Chicago, we had to do things on a budget. Between me and my wife, we weren't making a great income, and this is a major city, so we had to sort of settle for an apartment whose dimensions were 300 square feet. And for those of you who don't know, that's about the size of a shoebox, roughly. You know, we had to leave our shoes outside the door. That's how small it was. And it is worth reiterating, I think, that the cost of living in the United States does fluctuate massively across the country. When I lived in Indiana, just one state over, we were paying about $530 a month. That's basically unheard of in Chicago. And it's certainly unheard of in New York City, which of course was the city in which the show Friends is set. And I think it oh. shows like that that gave us this impression. I've never seen Friends but I've heard a lot about it so I might get right into that as well. The Americans were all living in big apartments. And speaking of houses, I was alerted to a tweet recently from a British person who couldn't believe that American addresses go way up into the thousands and their belief on this was that every street in the United States has thousands of houses on it. And this was a belief that I used to have because the country is absolutely massive. So you almost expect it to have to house that many people. But the thing is, there are way fewer people in this country per square mile than there are in Britain. So it doesn't add up. And that's when I got looking into it and in a previous video I outlined it doesn't really work like that on any given street they don't start at the number one and then end at 10,000 often and it's the case here in Chicago you'll usually have a string of houses for example all in the 6,000s on a given street and that's okay. because it's about six miles from the center of downtown one mile in from that they're all 5,000s another mile they're all 4,000s etc etc now not every city in the US does it from the center of the city it could be from another part of the city or just some other central point but that's sort of a general rule for how the numbering works on US houses. Okay. This didn't know that, so that's a good fact for me. This one comes up again and again, that the United States is such a young country that it basically doesn't have a history. And I've always thought of this perception of America to be quite a lazy one. Because even if you go back to 1776 through to the present day, yes, it is a short amount of time in comparison to the history of Britain, but think about all of the insane things that happened in that period. And even if you ignore all that, there's one thing that we tend to forget because we don't get taught it very deeply in Britain. And that is the thousands of years of native history that happened before we even 
even turned up. I was absolutely blown away, not literally, that would be weird, when I went to <laughs> Cahokia Mounds here in Illinois. Many, many hundreds of years ago, Cahokia Mounds used to be a native city, and it had about 20,000 people, which might not sound like a lot by both American and British standards, but back in the day, that was more than London. And I once read about this Ooh, right. volcano eruption that happened in present-day Oregon a few thousand years ago. And this eruption was witnessed and recorded by Native Americans who were in the area at the time. And long story short, they basically saw the origins of Crater Lake, which is absolutely huge. To be honest, both Brits and Americans love their myths. I mean, we've got the Loch Ness Monster, you've got a cryogenically frozen <laughs> Walt Disney, and this new mystery on BritBox, Sherwood, has got... Modern day Robin Hood. Can we not do that? Oh. Start giving nicknames to wanted murderers and the press gets excited. And I know what you're thinking, ooh, Lauren. This guy's amazing. It's why are you watching a gripping television show with your cat? Aren't you supposed to be editing this video? And the answer is yes. But you know what it's like. You sit down to watch just one episode of a really riveting show inspired by real life murders and you end up binge watching the entire thing. Trust me, I did the same thing with other shows like Line of Duty, The Responder, Why Didn't They Ask Evans, all of which of course are available on BritBox. Show me your salute for the sheriff. Thought that was a salute. No, that's American. British, American, British, American. You can start streaming titles like these today via your smartphone, tablet, desktop, Chromecast, Apple TV or Roku device as well as LG and Samsung smart TVs. Head to BritBox.com slash Lost in the Pond and use the promo code Lost in the Pond when signing up for a monthly subscription and you'll get 50% of your first month. Okay, that is just an ad. The link is also in my description below. <laughs> This one is embarrassing for me because years ago I believed that Canada and the United States were basically the same country. And the reason, the reason that I believe that is number one, I was 12, so cut me some slack. And number two, my only sort of exposure to both. Okay, he was 12, so you're excused. Both countries was through the people, was through the way they spoke. And to my young ears, which couldn't yet differentiate these two accents, Macho Man Randy Savage and Bret Hart basically had the same accent, just with an entirely different timber. And that's all I had to go on. And I think it's what a lot of British people have to go on, because I still occasionally see those comments. Oh, what is the difference between Canada and America? Or is it essentially that one has Mounties and the other doesn't? And it's only since I moved here that I've become super aware of the substantial difference between the two countries. Completely different healthcare systems, completely different food, completely different use of English. Right, in Britain we call it the loo, in America they call it a rest. No, we call it the loo room in Canada they call it a washroom and I've seen not always though I'm I mostly use toilet or bathroom seen all manner of different examples of that kind of thing in America they don't celebrate Boxing Day in Canada they do the Canadian dollar is different to the American dollar in some ways they go with British English in places that America doesn't and now that I'm older and I've listened to some of the regionalisms throughout the United States even the way Americans speak is different to how Canadians speak I'm not an expert on that so I'm not going to go into too much detail but these differences certainly go way beyond how the two countries pronounce the word about a boat. Bolt or bolt. I've touched on this before, but I couldn't really do a video without including it in this list. This perception that Americans are loud and boisterous. Oh, and wow. I can understand on some level where that yes. comes from. Because I think the way Americans speak, it comes from a different part of the throat. So it's a bit more projected, right? Whereas us Brits, it's more sort of, I don't know, understated a lot of the time. I think another reason that we think Americans are loud is how they present themselves in films. There might even have been a time in my life where I thought all Americans were loud just because Jim Carrey was. <laughs> He's Canadian, isn't he? He is Canadian. And culturally speaking, I definitely have found that Americans speak at a higher volume when they're in restaurants together. But there are so many other examples of the opposite being true. On match day, after we've had a pint or six, you know, we're singing the songs of our team who we love because they happen to be situated in the town that we were born in. And it's just what we do when we leave a nightclub, which, you know, I haven't done in 20 years. But when we did, you know, I'd be on the streets yelling at traffic cones because that's <laughs> that might have just been me. But what I'm saying is when we get drunk, we very much give Americans a run for their money. There's a loud person in all of us, right? I can agree. And once we free ourselves of our inhibitions, we can let out all of the decibels we want. That's not a call to action. It's just, it's merely an observation. <laughs> what was that? I missed that one. Uh, this is only for... 
Americans all walk around in funny, funny packs. <laughs> <laughs> this is only funny, not because of the image of Americans walking around with bomb bags on, but it's because we call them bomb bags and you call them fanny packs and it's bloody hilarious. It is also partly the visual because oh, I, bomb bags those. have never been cool, but this notion, which I occasionally read, that Americans are just always walking around wearing one is very laughable, especially as somebody who's lived here 14 years. So it's quite dumbfounding this one. I'm not saying that all British people think this way, but the ones that do, I'd be very interested to hear, do they think that way because they met an American in 1994 and they've just held on to that belief? Or are American tourists still wearing bomb bags? Do pe I mean, do people carry cash? But I don't, I can tell you this, I don't have a bomb bag slash fanny pack radar, right? I am not constantly surveilling the populace to see whether they do or do not have a fanny pack. But my feeling is I don't remember seeing one in a while. So I think this is one very time specific stereotype that can now I'll be laid to rest, all right? <laughs> Americans don't and say yes, autumn. And yes, I thought I'd include one that was quite topical, not just because we are in the autumn. What do they say? I don't know. But also because I mentioned this fact on my YouTube short yesterday. Now, while for reasons that were laid out in that YouTube short, Americans prefer the term fall, I was surprised to find that oh. the word autumn was pretty common among Americans. All right. All right. I don't know if this is a recent thing, like the whole country just woke up one morning and watched Lost in the Pond and thought to themselves, yes, we're changing things now. Or if it's just sort of always been here as an alternative to fall. And you might be thinking, ooh, Lawrence, aren't there many surprising word alternatives that Americans use that Brits don't know about? And the answer to that is yes. I merely brought this one up so I could make that very point. This is undoubtedly a pandemic era thing, but I've seen an increasing number of Americans using the word jab to mean shot. I once worked with an American colleague really? who liked I've, to use- I've never heard that word. the word bonkers. So in part because of the internet, just as Britain is taking on quite a few Americanisms, I think the same is true in reverse, and it will be very interesting to look further into those details. All and right. those are just a handful of myths that some Brits believe about America and Americans. Let me know in the comments some of the myths that you've had to discuss about this country. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on wow. Twitter at Lawrence. That, that was interesting. Interesting uh, facts around there. Hope you guys will enjoy that. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. And don't forget, guys, like this video, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next video. Peace out.